Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived in a village near the forest. Whenever she went out, the little girl wore a red riding cloak, so everyone in the village called her Little Red Riding Hood. One morning, Little Red Riding Hood asked her mother if she could go to visit her grandmother, as it had been a while since they'd seen each other. That's a good idea, her mother said, so they packed a nice basket for Little Red Riding Hood to take to her grandmother. When the basket was ready, the little girl put on her red cloak and kissed her mother goodbye. Remember, go straight to grandma's house, her mother cautioned. Don't dawdle along. And please don't talk to strangers. The woods are dangerous. Don't worry, mommy, said Little Red Riding Hood. I'll be careful. But when Little Red Riding Hood noticed some lovely flowers in the woods, she forgot her promise to her mother. She picked a few, watched the butterflies flit about for a while, listened to the frogs croaking, and then picked up a few more. Little Red Riding Hood was enjoying the warm summer day so much that she didn't notice a dark shadow approaching out of the forest behind her. Suddenly, the wolf appeared beside her. What are you doing out here, little girl? The wolf asked in a voice as friendly as he could muster. I'm on my way to see my grandma who lives through the forest near the brook, Little Red Riding Hood replied. Then she realized how late she was and quickly excused herself rushing down the path to her grandma's house. The wolf, in the meantime, took a shortcut. Hi everyone, my name is Lorenzo Marziali. I am an actor and an acting teacher based in Fermo in the Marche region of Italy. I've been uh, working with Muse for five years now, uh, with my local section, Muse del Fermano. Today uh, I want to talk about reading out loud particularly for an audience of children, maybe in schools or even to make them fall asleep at night. Uh, the problem is, when we read something out loud, for instance, a tale for a child, we often lack the necessary vocal and physical expressiveness to really involve the listener in the story, to make them lose themselves in the atmosphere we're trying to create with our voice, our face and our body. These are, of course, basic skills for an actor, but what I want to do today is giving you some tips, maybe some advice on how to improve your storytelling when you read aloud, even if you're not an actor, and even if you're totally unaccustomed to public, speak, to public speaking and you only do it for your children. So, uh, let's go with the tips. Uh, number one. Number one is going to be make a lot of variations. Uh, I'm talking about volume variations, tone variations, rhythm variations. Uh, these variations should be coherent with the words and phrases we're currently pronouncing, and of course with their meaning and what they bring to the story. Um, these variations will make us more expressive, and they will ultimately make the story more enjoyable for the listener. Moreover, that will constantly attract our audience's attention, so they will not become distracted or bored, and, if in, and even if they sometimes do, our next variation will regain their focus on the story. Let's go. Um, number two, play with the sound of the words. To make everything more lively, uh, a good tip is always to play with the consonants. Accentuating some of them can really make the difference, as can playing with the speed with which we pronounce certain words. Slowing down maybe some names uh, or accelerating some other words can really give you an edge. Number three, don't underestimate the importance of poses. Um, making the right pose at the right time can create a sensation of suspense 
and more in general would put the listener in the right state of mind to continue following the story because he'll have time to think about what he just heard and prepare to absorb more information. Not giving him or her this opportunity will certainly result in destruction or boredom. Number four. Number four is gonna be use your body. We do not speak only with our voice. We always use our entire body from our facial expressions to the tension that organically builds up through all our muscles when we feel a certain emotion. This tension will travel through our nervous system and give our voice more depth, more nuances and ultimately more truth. We will be, in other words, more believable and our listeners won't be able to take their eyes off of us the right facial expression combined with the right tension and the right resulting tone of voice is the best way to keep our audience involved in what we're saying and doing. This is very easy, easily uh, verifiable when we tell a tale to a group of children, uh, which we often do when we work in primary or elementary schools. Number five. Number five. Everything is important. Every word. Every short phrase is a chance to be expressive and creative with the way we speak. Uh, overlooking parts of the text or the tale is always a missed chance to engage our listeners. Number six, number six is gonna be act the characters. When you, uh, when, when you encounter a direct speech, try to speak as the character would. Uh, slow down. Think of ways to embody the traits of the character currently speaking. Uh, this is very important, particularly with children. I left the mm, most important tip for the end. Number seven, have fun. If you have fun telling a story, chances are your audience will have fun too, listening to it. Uh, this should be a fun and enjoyable process for the narrator. Um, it should be a pleasure for both. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you can find it uh, useful. Uh, maybe try to experiment with some of these techniques and feel free to get back to me with observations and questions. I hope to hear from you soon. Goodbye.